Hey, good morning. Welcome to the Tuesday morning edition of the Mid-Morning Show Coffee Break. A terrific Tuesday, because it's above freezing. That's right, yes. <laughs> Earlier this morning, I had to have Deb kind of check on our little thermometer machine that we've got uh, here, because it said 37. I went, are you sure that thing's right? <laughs> Yeah, it's not used you to that. You said to tap on it because there was something wrong with it. <laughs> and so she goes, so she's tapping on it. I'm I go, tapping. I don't know why that's going to help this thing. <laughs> I go. But I do it anyway. <laughs> and I go, oh, I just wanted to see if it was broke because it says it's 37. <laughs> not nine or two below or whatever. <laughs> I did come in this morning and I did refresh my computer because it said it was 40 and i thought oh that was yesterday's high <laughs> when i was getting the forecast but it was 40 when i came in this morning yeah oh, at the man. airport anyway and i was really shocked i, I thought wow that is what a change no kidding I, I guess folks in texas are having that change too they're yeah. like 70 degrees now 70s or something and 80s yeah depending on oh, talk about a pendulum swing oh. right Talk about a mess. I can't yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Oh, man. Yeah, so today we're talking about who's that one person in your life that made a difference. Um, you know, whether that be they, sh they shared the gospel with you or um, they, um, I don't know, helped you out of a difficult situation, was there for you when you were going through a tough time, mm -hmm. um, whatever. All this because... Uh, we had a, a chance to visit with uh, Annie Ferris, who mm -hmm. had a person in her life that made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And she had a really rough start to her life. And maybe you know someone like that, and you're wondering, you know, you see them as kids, and you wonder, how in the world are they going to make it in this world? Right. I mean, we've all had those thoughts. With some people's situation, It well, it's never hopeless with the Lord, and you'll hear how... Mm -hmm miraculously Annie got in a spot where she was able to thrive. Right. And maybe you've had a situation like that where God brought somebody into your life or he moved you someplace where there was somebody that took an interest in you and really encouraged you and lifted you up and was that one person to you. Yeah, that's right. So let us know. We'd love to hear those stories. Morning to Wanda and Heidi and Lori. Thanks for joining us this morning. Dave. Good to hear from you. Oh, Check Heidi in. mentioned her brother, T.J. Oh, Drinkle, and yep. you know him? Yep, yep, I met him. Um, he's with the Lord now, and um, but what a what an impact he had on a lot of truck drivers' mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. as he had a uh, ministry at Truck Stop, mm -hmm. a truck stop where he had a trucker's church, um, and a huge impact in people's lives. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, it was, that's, it was a real cool ministry that he had. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes there's so many people that God has put you put in your path at different seasons, it's hard to pick out one person. Right. But, um, yeah, if you can think of one person and how they impacted your life, put it down here on the yeah. comments section. And Definitely. we'll just rejoice with you that that one person invested in you. That's Lincoln Brewster. No One Like Our God with Ken and Deb on Moody Radio at uh, 704. Good morning. And uh, we're going to talk with Pastor Brian Bill coming up here in a bit about being salt and light. And you might be yourself somebody that has been salt and light to somebody else or somebody has been that to you and been that one person that's made a change in your life. How about you, Deb? Got anybody that's been a change, made a difference maker in your life? Oh, I knew you were going to ask that. There's just... <laughs> There's so we many. We got her. I know, but there's just so many people that I'm so thankful for. Well, sure. That God has placed in my life. Um, I mean, I have a lot of people too. I was just, I was thinking back when I was in high school and just some of the Sunday school teachers I had, mm -hmm. um, one in particular that told me I could read God's word for myself. Okay. And that really did change my life because. I really saw church as just someplace you go and you follow rules. Oh, uh, okay. You know, and yeah. it wasn't really a relationship. Even though I, I grew up in a church that was Bible sure. preaching, Bible believing, sure. you know, accepted the Lord. It was all about the rules and what yeah. you didn't do. Okay. To me. Yeah. 
Sure. But she kind of turned it around to, hey, you know, you can meet with God every day. You can open up the Bible and you can read it. And mm-hmm. I'd gone through a wand and everything, so I knew. But it was just that simple message sure. that really got me thinking about walking with the Lord yeah. and not just knowing about him by just going to church. Right. Instead of facts and figures, it was a relationship. Yeah. And then her husband actually was the choir director at my church. Okay. And he encouraged me with singing, but he also encouraged me to get involved in radio. Okay. That's cool. So, I mean, that um, is really neat. Yeah. But God makes those divine appointments with people. And there's been so many people. I couldn't mean, you know, family members, just that just were right there. Mm -hmm. You know, God used them in my life. And, you know, I pray that someday, you know, God will use me that way. Oh, he has. I know he has. And so... I've seen incidences where he has used you, you know. You might not see it, but I've mm -hmm. seen it from looking from, you know, as Mm -hmm. a bystander. Um, Yeah, definitely. And I think that um, uh, we all have those people in our life. And I know it's maybe hard to pinpoint one person, but just think about one person that maybe has made a difference and share that because you never know. That might encourage somebody else. yeah to be that difference maker. Mm -hmm. So share those with us. Call or text 800-221-9356. Yeah, because you never know what, you know, just a kind word is going to to do for somebody. That's right. You know? It can be the simplest thing. It can be the simple thing that we, I think we'll find out in heaven sometimes, but I don't think we'll know... On earth, but we can certainly think about the people that have really um, changed things for us and were that one person in our life. Yeah. And uh, Wanda said, Pastor Doris, mm. she led me to Christ with the sinner's prayer. Mm. Very cool. Heidi said, Pregnancy resources over 30 years ago. Mm. Very cool. Mm-hmm. I think Heidi brings up a really good point. It can be an organization or it, yeah. it can be a ministry well, sure. that really. Yeah, I mean, if you want to look at it from that perspective, mm-hmm. I mean, evangelism explosion mm-hmm. made the huge difference in my life. Yeah. They're the ones, you know, that group of people led me mm-hmm. to the Lord, you mm-hmm. know. Um, so it was an organization, you know, a group of people mm-hmm. that did it. Um, but, yeah. Um, so, there's, I mean, I look back and I see so many people that had a hand. You know how we look back and we can see the people that have made a difference in our spiritual walk. And you can see how God orchestrated that. Mm-hmm. You know, from a guy that I worked with at the airport in Billings, Montana on Sundays. And he would have preaching on TV because uh, he was a believer. And, and he would talk, they, him and another guy would talk about things from church and the Lord and everything. And I was a, obviously a believer and it kind of went over my head. But that was still a seed That's right. that was planted. Mm-hmm. You know, and then um, even some people that had youth for Christ. Uh, and a guy and I had gone to a meeting because we wanted to meet girls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we met, we went to this. Um, uh, or this meeting, and but I I know the gospel is being preached. Mm-hmm. I don't, it didn't register necessarily, but it was another seed mm-hmm. that God used in my life. And so there's lots of people in mm-hmm. different situations that have made a difference in our lives. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's God's grace over and over again that we, you know, that He would care about us to to give us that person that we need when we need it. Right. And so who was that person that you was there when you needed it? Yep. Give us a call or join us here. Yeah, we're going to take them live here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy and I are doing hand signals and, and Deb's I'm nev- just talking. <laughs> well, I'm not really good with hand signals. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't be backing up and I shouldn't be landing planes. <laughs> <laughs> it's nine minutes after seven o'clock. Ken and Deb here talking about, uh, you know, just that one person or that one uh, ministry that has made a difference in your life. Dave's on with us this morning. Hi, Dave. Good morning. How are we doing, guys? Good. Doing well. How about you? I'm doing good. Can you good. hear me okay? Yeah, oh, yeah. You're clear as can be. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I was uh, involved in a ministry down at Scott County Jail. Uh-huh. And I had two very godly men that worked alongside me. One was Pastor Chuck, and the other was Greg. And it was such a enriching experience. It helped me grow, mature, while serving others. And to this day, it's 
it's a bond that we have that is still growing and sharing and giving. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And it's important to have those brothers in the Lord to help you and to come alongside you and do ministry together. You know, it's very cool. Yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thanks, Dave. Thanks Appreciate for sharing. You, oh. you guys take care. God bless. You too. Mm-hmm. It's 10 minutes after 7 o'clock. How about you? You can still share with us. Uh, what is uh, or who is somebody in your life that has made a difference? Call or text 800-221-9356. Here is Together. It's for King and Country. <sighs> yeah, I decided not to run down there, so I'm like, hey, <laughs> yeah. can I have in the morning? didn't feel who like getting this? that much energy expended right uh, now. Oh, you can barely hear me. That's because I'm whispering. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jeremy, who's that one person in your life? Who's that one person in my life yeah. that has affected me mm-hmm. and my faith in Christ? Mm-hmm. Um, well, that'd probably be my mother. She had me in the church since I was young, got me to, uh, back when we were at churches, that the, the Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, um, just mm-hmm. uh, watching her through BSF and CBS and mm-hmm. how much she just loves the Lord and seeks to know more about him, probably mm-hmm. probably my mother, Sharla. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, Jeremy was talking about how he didn't have to run. If you weren't catching this the past few days or whatever, we are doing or starting some construction in our studios. Mm-hmm. And so they've taken what used to be what we call the production room or sub-control room across the hall, and they've moved all the equipment out of there, and it's back in the back of the building because they're going to start doing construction in that room and then here. And so they've taken the, the phone that we use for the on-air studio, that the extra phone that Jeremy would go over and answer phone calls over there, and they've moved it all the way to the back of the building. And so the only phone that we can answer other than in the studio is back there. Mm-hmm. And so that's why he was having to run back there. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, when we do get more involved in the transition, which I believe is going to be sometime after spring share, which yeah. is coming up, mm-hmm. um, well, in actually, what, two weeks? Mm-hmm. I think so, yeah. Uh, we'll be putting uh, the coffee break on hiatus. We'll probably right. do some stuff through social media. So right. if you mm-hmm. haven't liked the mm-hmm. Facebook page or Instagram, do that and you can stay caught up. But we'll be putting a break on the uh, daily live streams yeah. during that period. And then we'll be in a going to look like a brand new studio. It's I know. It's so cool. It is. It is. And Jeremy's going to have his own spot so he can talk to you without whispering. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> and I can I can turn Ken and Deb's mics off. And... <laughs> no, not doing that. But yeah. And so what what's going to be kind of cool is that we're going to try and maybe do some like updates mm-hmm. on social media with video and stuff of the different construction phase of, mm-hmm. of things. And you'll have to make sure you like Check that out and like us on your on our page so you can get updates about that. We kind of all want to tear down that wall. <laughs> <laughs> what wall's that, Deb? Well, there's going to be a wall that's torn down here between yeah. two rooms. Right, because we're going to make one yeah. big like community office. Right, and, and so there's so, a wall, and so we want to all get sledgehammers. Yes, <laughs> yes. We're kind of looking forward to a little destruction. I mean, <laughs> and actually, actually, the wall that is behind you guys right now with the TV. There's yeah. going to be a big window there. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. It'd be so cool. <laughs> For King and Country, that's called Together on Moody Radio. And we are together this mm-hmm. morning. And it's great, great to have you with us. It's 714 now, and we're talking a little bit about somebody that has made a difference in your life. That one person, uh, because we're going to talk with uh, Annie Ferris next hour about her book called That One Person. And uh, who is it in your life that's made a difference? Who's been salt and light in your life? Um, you know, let us know. Our phone number, 800-221-9356. One thing about Annie's story that you'll hear at 830 is just about how when you go through a hard time like that, you are, and somebody is that one person to you, you start to look for people mm-hmm. like you that you can be that one person to. Right, yeah. And maybe that's even happened in your life. Maybe you have a story where you see, okay, I went through this, and God brought somebody with the exact same trial or in the exact same season where I was Mm -hmm. struggling into my life, and I was able to be 
that one person right. to that person. And it was like, you know, paying it forward, basically. Right. Even if it was a difficult time in your life, you're really the only one that can understand people that have gone through what you've gone through. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just thinking about uh, a guy at our church, um, and his name's Scotty. Um, and he, you know, he has been an encouragement to me because he is like on fire for the Lord. Mm. You know, we can get in those desert periods in our in our walk, walk with the Lord where we're just kind of going through the motions mm -hmm. and you're just kind of going through it. And then you, you, you meet up with somebody like Scotty that's just on fire for the Lord, you know, and he's just like, you know, going out and preaching mm -hmm. the gospel to mm -hmm. people, you know, and he's just out there and he's just telling people how much he loves God and it's such an that's another person that's encouragement to me. Right. You know, they right. kind of give me an old spiritual kick in the seat, you know. <laughs> yes. uh, you know, get going. That is definitely <laughs> being a light. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And so maybe you've got somebody in your life like that that's uh, just been an encouragement from a, a distance, so to mm -hmm. speak. You've just seen their their relationship mm -hmm. blossom with the Lord and that's encouraged you. So let us know 800-221-9356. Yeah, you know, there's there's people that God brings into his kingdom and he brings them in and they're, they can reach people that nobody else could reach. Right. They, they, they can reach people that I would never be able to reach, mm -hmm. you know, and Scotty's one of those guys. He just, he's just got that personality, you know, and a, and a testimony that I could never reach somebody that he can reach, but that's why we're all necessary. Right. right. Yeah. You know? Um, and he is just, uh, yeah, he's just uh, on fire and just cool to, to see him. And, um, he goes on Facebook live a lot and just encouraging little, mm. you know, 30 mm. second messages or whatever, you know, and encourages you for the day or something. And it's really cool. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, we need those people in our life that just, you know, get us out of that rut mm -hmm. and get us going. So, in fact, that's kind of when we were talking with Annie, that's that's the kind of person uh -huh. she is. Yep. Um, you know, I'm so thankful she wrote this book on that one person, because I think it will encourage people to think about how they can be that one person. I think that's her goal is, you know, her story didn't end in the hopeless part of her life. Right. Um, God brought her through to an incredible ministry to other people. Yeah. I think we've got a call. We'll take a call here real quick. Good morning, Hans. How are you? Pretty good. Good. Hey, I got a I got a testimony about some people that were involved in my life. Okay. Uh, first of all, is uh, my brother who miraculously was saved uh, New Year's night between seventy one and seventy two as he was going to a beer party. Wow. Uh, and uh, somebody before he got to the beer party was sharing scripture with him. Scripture. Mm. Uh, motivated him that he needed a relationship with Christ. Wow. And then then my brother uh, continued to pursue me, uh, hmm. kind of like in Matthew. Yeah. And uh, um, I rejected it, told him to get lost. You know, I had hmm. athletics in my life in high school. Yeah. And then uh, when I got to college, my roommate, uh, he was his name was Dick, and he was from uh, Clear Lake, Iowa, he was hmm. a great wrestler. And uh, he was a Christian, and he would share Christ with me just exactly like my brother did. Wow. And then, then after the surgery, I went to Dick, talk, took me to the movie The Thief in the Night, and mm. then a person named Pal was the preacher, and he made the gospel so simple I couldn't reject it. Wow. And, uh, but three strategic people that were placed in my life at strategic times, and... Uh, here I am today. Yeah, right. praise God. Mm. Cool. Yeah, that's so cool. And yes. now you're making a difference in people's lives. That's what's cool. So, yes, yes I am. Yeah, very cool. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Hans. Appreciate you sharing yes. that with us. All right. Thank you. You bye. bet. Bye bye. That's a cool story. How exciting that is. I mean, Hans probably thought, well, I'm getting rid of my brother going to college. Yeah, right. Gets a roommate. Yeah, God says, oh, no. That's just Sorry, like buddy. his brother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Hound of heaven after right. him. 720, Ken and Deb here. And this is hard to believe the final week of February. And that means that the Dot a Day campaign is going to wrap up uh, this coming Sunday. 
And so you need to get in the drawing, if you haven't done so already, to win one of those Echo Dot third-generation uh, smart speakers. And if you want to enter to win, do that today. Don't delay. Yep. Head over to moodyradio.org slash quadcities. Put your name in to win, and you could bring a dot home. There you go. That's right. So what is it? Dot the I's and cross the T's? <laughs> ah, sorry. Anyway, yeah, get on over there and get signed up. 720, here's Pat Barrett with Build My Life on Moody Radio. So I was saying um, the other day about how I learned a new thing on my Echo Dot about watching over the house. Mm -hmm. And yesterday we were, we had uh, Joanna, who is our friend's daughter. We pick her up from school occasionally and have her there while Jennifer's at work and stuff. And so she was over there and, and we were getting ready to go look at my daughter and son-in-law's new house. And so we're getting ready to walk out and I said, Alexa, I'm leaving. And she goes, okay, bye. I'll start watching the house. And Joanna kind of looked around. <laughs> She's going, what? <laughs> so I explained to her what it was, and she goes, wow. <laughs> and then we got back, and I said, Alexa, I'm home. She said, okay, welcome home. I'll stop watching the house. <laughs> But Joanna, it was her. Her reaction was priceless uh, to that yesterday. It was so funny. <laughs> um, so, do you start almost thinking that Alexa has a personality? I mean, she's AI, but is she? Right. You know, uh, do you think it's easy to think of it as a relationship with her? Or, I mean, I could see how you could really. I know people that do talk yeah, to yeah. talk to their smart That's speaker I mean. all it, the time. It's almost like. They're part of the family. Right, yeah. I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard stories of nursing homes where mm. folks are, they feel a little lonely, and, yeah, they talk mm. to her, and they're like, thank you, or what was it? Mm. One time I heard um, this lady went to the nursing home to see her father who was in there, and she's like, have you been have you been using Alexa to get updates on scores of games and that? And he's like, no, I don't want to bother her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cute. Uh, yeah, but so if you haven't gotten in the drawing yet for the smart speaker, Lex is waiting for you. <laughs> Tim said, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> I'm with you, Tim. That is a little bizarre to me. <laughs> This whole relationship with AI is a little bizarre to me. It's like, okay, this is a recorded, canned response to certain things you ask. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. yet we think of it as personal. Sure. We think of her, her talking personally to me, and that's what I was like. There's a philosophical part of me that goes, do I really want that? Yeah, I know, I know. But but I don't want to be rude either. <laughs> <laughs> and my grandkids, you know, whenever they come over, it's like, can we play with Alexa? I go, no, no, not right it's now. It's like she's a playmate. Oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> that's it's funny. See? Is Alexa free to play? Yeah. <laughs> Can she come out? No, you need her for a recipe that you're using? Okay. <laughs> well, it's funny. You can say, tell me a joke. She tells you a joke. I know. You know? Yeah, it's funny. You can do all kinds of things. Anyway, so if you haven't signed up yet, you got until Sunday night at midnight uh, to get registered to win one of those. And we will be back tomorrow morning with another mid-morning show coffee break just after 7. So have a great day. Enjoy the nice temperatures, and we'll see you tomorrow.